Students who score in the 170s typically score perfectly on logic games and then just lose a few points on each of the other sections. So let's think about what it takes to score perfect or close to it on logic games. There are a few things that top performers do differently than other students in order to maximize their success on the logic game section. First of all, they have a plan of attack in which they approach the logic game's questions within a game. Then there are a few things they do differently as well in order to see the logic game section from the test maker's perspective. But first, let's look at their plan of attack. They do orientation questions first, then the local questions, then the global questions. Orientation questions are simply that warm-up question you typically see at the beginning of a logic game asking you for an example of a valid scenario. Then there are the local questions that insert a specific constraint on the game that when combined with the rules give you a more constrained scenario. And finally, you have the global questions that are more general in nature. The benefit of doing the logic games questions in this order is that it gives you more valid scenarios which will allow you to eliminate answer choices more quickly and arrive at the correct answer more efficiently without having to draw as many additional hypothetical scenarios. Now, one of the biggest ways to get into the test maker's perspective is to write your own LSAT logic games from scratch. This, of course, is difficult. It's pretty much as difficult as it sounds, but it is possible to do. I've written several of my own LSAT logic games from scratch of a variety of different question types. These are not simply official LSAT logic games with the topics and variables changed like some prep companies have done. These are actual unofficial logic games that I've created myself of all different types. I've done relative ordering, I've done strict ordering, grouping selection, another grouping selection, grouping matching, another grouping matching. Of course, you're probably thinking, well, Steve has been teaching the LSAT forever. He can do it, but that doesn't mean that I can do it. I'm just a student who is starting off and I don't know anything. How could I write my own logic game? Good news is that you can write your own logic game. In fact, here is an example of a student written logic game. This again also is not simply an official game with the topics and variables changed. This is a completely written from scratch unofficial logic game that a student wrote. And by the way, all of these games I've shown you here are available for free. There's a link to them below this video if you'd like to check them out. Now, of course, it might seem daunting or difficult for you to write an entire game from scratch. So here's an alternative idea. Instead of writing your own complete game from scratch, what if you wrote your unofficial bonus question for an official logic game? Here's an example of one I've created for you right here. This is modeled on or based upon prep test 33 game two, the famous birds in the forest in out game. I wrote my own supplemental bonus question for this game. It's based upon LSAC's rules and their initial setup, but this is a question they could have asked. Maybe they even should have asked it, but they didn't. So this is a question I wrote as a supplement. You can look at test 33 game two, look at the rules, create a diagram, and then solve this question in addition to the six or seven or so questions that LSAC wrote for their game. I've written 40 unofficial questions like this for each of the 40 logic games in prep tests 29 through 38, as well as many more. And they're linked below this video if you'd like to check them out. I strongly encourage you to write your own logic games or at least write your own bonus questions for official logic games. And the reason is that this will deepen your understanding of logic games significantly. In particular, how does LSAC create rules that will then lead to inferences? And how does LSAC write incredibly tempting wrong answer choices? One of the things I've done with my own LSAT logic games is I've actually chosen to write some games that are a bit more difficult on average 
than some of LSAC official games, but they're still, of course, perfectly valid, perfectly useful prep for you. And one of the things that I strove or attempted to do with my games was to lay tempting wrong answer choices for you, to lay traps, because that will help you see how LSAC is playing on common LSAT logical fallacies, common misconceptions that students often make. And of course, you need to spot the traps in order to avoid them. So again, strongly encourage you, write your own games. It is possible, as this student did, and write your own bonus questions at the very least. I assure you that you'll learn a great deal from them. And if you'd like to taste them out, then just email them to me and I will share them with the world, with everyone watching and reading out there. If you'd like to get some guinea pigs as an experiment to see whether your logic games are valid and contain no mistakes. It's really a fun exercise. Students have gotten a great deal of benefit out of doing this. So please try it out and let me know what you come up with. I'd love to see what you create with this.